Hey guys, my name is Ray Lines, and today I'll be showing you how to create your own personal Fortnite video thumbnail using Photoshop. So to start off, I'm going to seek a bit of inspiration from YouTubers who are already currently making Fortnite videos, and mainly Ali A, who's the notorious YouTuber known for his clickbaity thumbnails that catch your eye immediately and make you want to find out more. So I'm just going to scroll through all his videos here and get a bit of inspiration, see what I can spot within all of his thumbnails that um, are consistent throughout all his videos. As you can see, there's instantly a colour scheme. He's using orange, blue, yellow, purple and green. And that's, that's just, they're all kind of the Fortnite colours, so you've got to think about that when you're making your thumbnail. The second thing I noticed straight off the bat is that within all of his thumbnails you'll either see an arrow a question mark or a circle around something on the thumbnail that will invite the user to want to find out more about what exactly is going on and that will make them click the video. The third thing I noticed about all the thumbnails, or most of them for that matter, is that Ali himself is present within them and he's usually giving some sort of emotional reaction towards what is being shown in the video. And last but not least, one of the biggest things about all the thumbnails is that there's something that'll instantly catch your eye upon viewing the thumbnail and it'll make you stop and wonder what exactly is going on and it'll make you click into the video to find out just that. As you can see as I scroll down the page, you can see all of these factors weighing into every single thumbnail on screen. And one thumbnail in particular caught my eye is this one. Now I've never seen that chest in Fortnite. And the fact is, it never was in Fortnite. But by the time you've clicked into the video and viewed the video, you forget why you even clicked into it, and you're watching his gameplays. Now this would be known as a bit of a dirty clickbaity tactic, but it works, and nowadays it's just what is done by gamers across the entire platform. Now, you don't have to do this, it's still only optional. But to be honest, the reason I'm showing you this is that you have to get into the mindset that you need to catch the viewer's eye and make them want to click your video. Now I know this video is just a tutorial in Photoshop, but I think it's, it's good to know the reasons behind what you're doing, it's important to know these things. By all means, if you had some exciting footage or gameplay from Fortnite and you want to use a thumbnail or screenshot from that itself, feel free to, but keep in mind that you need to grab the, the viewer's eye. So we're going to need a couple of images to get started, I just quickly googled a few things before starting the video, so I got a background that I'll be using in my thumbnail and a red arrow because I'm kind of lazy on creating that myself in Photoshop. And last but not least, I'm going to use a, a, a chest that wouldn't be actually in Fortnite as this is a clickbaity uh, thumbnail. But uh, you can use something yourself that will actually be inside your video. By all means, go ahead, it is absolutely up to you. And last but not least, the infamous Victory Royale. You need that in every single thumbnail, mark my words. So we're going to jump straight into it by importing the background I selected earlier. Now I'm going to speed up certain parts of this video just to make it quicker because some parts are a bit repetitive and there's no need for you to see all of the uh, processes behind it. Um, but I'll make sure to point out anything you might not know. So I'm just going to resize this image, um, although it fitted perfectly I just want it in a different position and a bit bigger. So once I'm happy with that I'm going to click OK. To resize an image all you have to do is press Ctrl and T. So next, go up to File, New, and then I'm going to import the uh, Victory Royale um, sign because this is this needs to be in every single thumbnail. I'm telling you, even if you didn't have a Victory Royale, people will forget why they clicked in, but instantly it shows people what the video is. It's a gameplay or it's footage, and it, it shows that you are a competitive player and uh, that you're playing Fortnite, first of all. That, that, that's, that's vital. It, it says straight away, I'm playing Fortnite and um, I'm playing to win. So next I'm just going to add a drop shot on that because it looks a bit nicer. So next import an image of yourself looking happy or surprised or shocked. And if you're not comfortable doing this you could just use your, your character within the game. That's what a lot of people do. You can find it on Google again and uh, just use that instead. But for this uh, video I'm going to use my own image of myself looking shocked. So I'm just going to scale this down so it fits nicely within the thumbnail. And then I'm going to use the pen tool to cut myself out as I don't want the background in it. Um, again, I'm going to be doing this very fast because I, th this video, when I recorded it, it was about 40 minutes long, so I needed to scale it down. So I might speed up parts of it and uh, hopefully I cover everything. Um, so I'm just going to use the pen tool, cut myself out and then remove the background. So now that I've traced myself with the pen tool, I'm going to right click and select make selection and click OK. And then go up to select and inverse and then just press delete. And then I'm going to go select and deselect. 
Now that looks perfect, but if you're fussy like me, you'll notice that the hair isn't quite cut out correctly, so I'm just gonna use the eraser tool and uh, give myself a new haircut. If at any part you feel like I'm going too fast, just pause the video and take a look at what exactly I'm doing. So now that I'm finished giving myself a trim, I'm going to flip the image. So I'm going to go edit, transform, and flip horizontal so that I'm facing in towards whatever I'm gasping at in awe. Now I'm just going to click and drag the Victory Royale layer up and above the cutout of me so that it's visible. Alright, so the thumbnail's already coming together quite nicely, but we still have a bit more to do. So using the text tool, we're going to add in a bit of text. You want to keep this short and sweet and don't write too much. You want to be straight to the point and let the viewer know exactly what is being shown in the video. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to write new hidden chest. And I'm going to go with what is already quite common in Fortnite thumbnails, and that is yellow text. How predictable. But hey, look, it works. To speed things up for myself, I'm going to add the effects to one word and then duplicate it twice to create the other two words. So in the layer styles, I'm going to add a drop shadow. Now, mess around with these settings and you'll get a good feel for it yourself what's right. Um, or you can pause screen and copy what I do here. And now we're going to add a gradient overlay next. And under blend mode, select overlay. And then just click OK. So now if you're copying me exactly, then what you want to do here is click on the text and click and drag it down to the page icon. This will duplicate it. And then you can change the text using the text tool and repeat this process one more time. And there you have your three words. Now with your layers tab, select all three of the text layers and right click and select rasterize. And then right click again and select merge layers. This will merge all the text down into one movable object that you can rescale by pressing Ctrl and T. Note though that this text will no longer be editable after you merge the layers. So now, just to make the text more visible in this hectic chaos that's going on around it, um, I'm going to add a little background using the pen tool. So I just jotted out a little artistic background and right click and make selection and then I'm just going to fill it in with blue. Make sure you do this on a new layer and place that new layer below the text layer. And then I'm just going to add a drop shadow to this. And again I'm going to add a gradient overlay. And put blend mode to overlay and select OK. As you can see now the text is a lot more visible and it stands out a lot straight away to the, the viewer who sees it. So next I'm going to add in the chest that we downloaded earlier and you'll see what we're going to do with this. Again, I'm just using this chest as an example in the video, but you could replace this with whatever's relevant within your video to grab your viewer's attention. Now I'm just going to control T and then hold control while adjusting each corner to warp it into a more correct perspective for where I want to place it, which is within the roof of this tower. Now this next effect I'm going to add is a bit of a, a cheap look and it's in no way a professional way of doing it. But it works and it's just a quick and easy way. So I'm going to try and kind of do a little cutout on the roof as if you were looking inside. Um, and uh, hopefully the viewer just kind of instantly gets what I'm trying to uh, put across to them. So I'm just going to use the pen tool and cut out a little section of the roof. And then I'm going to right click and make a selection and click OK. Next I'm going to select my foreground colour and change it by using the colour picker on the image. So I'm just going to take one of the browns that's already in the image and I'm just going to use the paintbrush tool and fill in my selection. And make sure you do this on a new layer that's placed below the chest but in front of the tower. If you're new enough to Photoshop you might be finding all these layers kind of confusing but uh, don't worry, uh, with practice you will wrap your head around it eventually. Now with this layer you've just created, um, add an inner shadow. And like I've done before, I'm just going to mess around with the settings a little bit and uh, just get a feel for what looks right. Um, again, I'm trying to make it look like you're kind of looking into a, a cutout section of the roof, but at the same time, I know it's not going to look completely realistic, but it lets the uh, viewer know what I'm trying to get across to them. So that's looking alright. So on the chest layer now, we're going to add a little glow, and this just makes a bit of magic and catches the eye a little bit more. Just add an outer glow on the chest layer itself. I'm going to go purple because it kind of uh, looks a bit majestic and uh, mysterious, I guess. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to click OK. Next, and perhaps the most important thing, the big red arrow. Yes, every thumbnail you make has to have one. Or a question mark or a circle around something. But you need to, you need to make the, the, the viewer curious, and this is a good way of doing it. 
also have the arrow pointing at something very small on the screen and trust me the viewer will want to find out what's going on. So now I'm just bringing in the chest again and making kind of a larger version to um, entice the viewers that little bit more. So I'm just going to shrink down the text a little bit. What's key in thumbnails like this is that everything has to find its place and it has to fit in all together like a puzzle. And most importantly you can't have any wasted space so make sure something is filling up every part of the thumbnail. So right now I'm just going to add a background, so I used the um, rectangle selection tool and then I'm going to fill that in with an orangey gold colour. And then I'm going to add a drop shadow to this and a stroke to this. And I'm going to make it a white stroke and I'm going to click OK. Again, make sure that this new layer you created is below the other layer that has the chest in it because you need ch the chest to show on top of the background. So I'm just going to resize this and position it again and now I'm going to add an outer glow to this chest but this time I'm going to mix it up a little bit and try a yellow glow just so that it'll complement the um, orangey gold background. Once that's done select the chest and the golden square and just drag them down into the folder I can and this will create a group for them. It's not essential that you do this but it, it helps tidy things up and keep you from getting confused with all the layers. So we're almost done and that looks really nice but I just want to add in one extra little feature that uh, some people use and it's not used as much so I think it's just a nice extra touch is I'm going to use the pen tool to trace out this tower that the chest is apparently located in make selection and click OK and now with this I'm going to go up to the top here and click layer new and layer via copy and this will cut out the selection onto a new layer and with this I'm just going to add everything back in here and now I'm just going to select this layer and add a outer glow. This is just a nice extra touch to kind of highlight the structure or the object that you want to grab the viewers attention with. That is pretty much it guys, at the end you have a very loud, very obnoxious and very eye catching video thumbnail for your Fortnite videos. A quick tip I'll give you is to, to zoom out on Photoshop and this will allow you to view it as if it were an actual thumbnail on YouTube as they are very small and this is something you might not think about. So make sure that everything stands out correctly, everything's positioned correctly and uh, that everything is viewable. Um, you don't want anything that's too small or too, too awkward to look at. So that is pretty much it guys, that's how you make your own personal Fortnite video thumbnail in Photoshop. I hope you found this helpful, if you did please subscribe and hit that bell too so you get notifications when I make new videos. And uh, feel free to check out the video that's on screen now. Uh, yep, yeah. see ya.